Hello sweet friends and welcome to my channel crafting with me in Danny Jones today I have some Christmas magic in the form of some faux foods yes we can decorate with some yummy goodies that look good enough to eat but we shouldn't eat them and I am not alone in this wonderful endeavor I have my two sweet friends Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling and Monica of Up All Night DIY and we are doing gingerbread and other goodies together as a can't sleep creations collaborations and we stay up all night as we are crafting and present this to you so let's get started I am starting with some macarons. Now I found this on Timu, this wonderful mold that makes six macarons at a time. You can use resin, you can use uh, air dry, dry clay or paper clay. I am using foam clay because I feel, be, I feel or believe that foam clay is the closest to a French macaron. Now you know if you've ever made French macarons before by yourself, it is a very difficult process. It's tedious and it takes some time, but it's so worth it in the end. So here, all I am doing is coloring my beautiful macarons in these pastel colors. Now once, I, now here's a faux pas. I'm going to show you what happens when I start crafting at night when I come home from work. I have this idea in my head and then i try to put it together and it just doesn't work out and this was that disaster this week i wanted to make a cute macaron tower and i was using these foam sheets and once i got it all together i just didn't like it at all so i tore them all apart and instead i am using a styrofoam cone now i'm very silly because i should have just used toothpicks in this process it would have been so much easier but you know after a certain time of night you just you, you you're like on autopilot at least for me it's like okay i'm on a, i just want to get this done and um i glued them on as best as i can because they would fall off if i didn't hold them because obviously the glue would melt the styrofoam but still i got through it i used these pastel colors and afterwards i thought hmm, maybe i should have used more christmasy colors and i tried that as well and it really did not look good like green and red macarons i don't know it didn't look too good to me it didn't look appetizing so i decided to go with these pastels and besides pastel is a very big thing for christmas this year so i thought i might as well just embrace the and just run with it and you're probably wondering why am i making a macaron tower well i wanted to include this as part of my decor for the queen of hearts since i am working on the Deering estate decor and uh, i just thought it would be cute to add to her little tea set and i thought i had made enough macaron oh that's another story so i made macarons i probably made more than what you see here but i don't know where they are how did that happen well both of my cats jumped on the um the desk the table at the same time and somehow somewhere the macaroons as they were drying with the paint flew all over into the fan oh my gosh there were just macaroons all over the place so i'm sure there's macaroons stuck in the back of my furniture in some of my flowers but I, i've at least lost like 15 macarons i thought this was going to be a much bigger tower that was the other reason i had to change the size of my tower so needless to say this was a very very frustrating day for crafting for me but i soldiered on and tried to do my best with what i had and in the time period that i had to finish this project luna was helping me counting the macarons she pointed out there were some macarons missing she didn't necessarily like that but you know it is what it is girl we just gotta keep moving forward so as you notice i did put the macaroons on a um a little candle holder from the dollar tree and i think that was like a heart candle candle holder but it was cracked so it was perfect i have paint on my hands can you tell i have paint on my hands and here i am what i decided to do because you could see the styrofoam through the cracks I decided to fill them with um, my caulking because I thought it would look like frosting and in a way it does and in a way it doesn't but I'm just gonna go with it so what I did was I added some Epsom salts and some chunky glitter like you know snowy white kind of glitter and it really made it look like glistening sugar as as 
as much as snow, but there's my Epsom salts bag in the, in the back, but it did look like, you know, that very rough, uh, sugar that you use to decorate with. I think it's called sanding sugar. And I think, I think it looks pretty well. Once I filled in those gaps, so you wouldn't see the styrofoam cone in the background. I think it looks much, much better. What do you think? Now, I decided to add some cake pops to my decor. I don't know if the Queen of Hearts had cake pops, but I'm making cake pops because I, I enjoy making cake pops. They're so easy. All you need is a styrofoam ball and a wooden dowel from Dollar Tree. There's a whole bunch of those little wooden, wooden dowels that they sell. And you put them together, just adding a little bit of caulking at the end, just like you would do with like the white chocolate. Same thing, same process. Now, what I did here was I just opened the bottom of this... Um, I guess this uh, bottle or tube of the caulking I am gonna loosen it with a little bit of water just to make it smoother and all I'm going to do the same way you would do with like well you wouldn't you would dump it or dunk it into the hot white chocolate or the warm white chocolate here I'm just going to smear it on using the spoon and I think it has a very good effect to make it look like a cake pop and imagine if you make a whole bunch of cake pops and make them into ornaments now um, I, I love I love making these cake pops because well number one I love cake pops the only problem is because I love cake pops so much and I make these faux cake pops it makes me want to have cake pops now I'm dunking it into this styrofoam uh, confetti or yeah, I, I don't know what to call them. They're little, little, little styrofoams, but look at the beautiful pastel colors they have. And I think it just looks so fabulous. Now you can do different, different iterations. You can use just the white, um, like I, I showed before. I did add a little bit of white uh, acrylic paint to that to make it even whiter. And I'm just adding these little seed beads that look like um, sprinkles. I thought this was perfect. And I think white with the red looks so, so cute for Christmas. So here is your other selection. I also add a little bit of chunky white glitter, just add a little glisten. And I think this is cute too. Now imagine putting some little bows on this. You can even wrap them in cellophane and make them look even more legitimate. And then lastly, I just used some chunky glitter. I painted the, the, the um, caulking with a little bit of acrylic paint in this light, light green. And there you have it, some lovely faux cake pops. Now you can also use the styrofoam balls and make mini cupcakes or big cupcakes depending on the size of your ball. Now I did use um, some of the great stuff. I just poured out some great stuff and let it um, set. And now I'm just using the leftover. It, it got a little bit runny. I had added too much water at one point. So I said, well, it'll just look like, you know, I know a ganache a white chocolate with you know pistachio ganache and the same thing just using those wonderful styrofoam balls from the dollar tree and making that look like some sprinkles i think this is adorable same idea once again as you can see there but instead of sprinkles what i added to the top of it was some faux snow and it actually looks like coconut. I don't know what it looks like to you, but to me, it looks like coconut. And then just to add a little more embellishment, I added some more caulking on top to make it look like whipped cream. Again, I didn't use any special nozzles or anything else because I was, you know, I was running around <laughs> and I just wanted to get this done. But I just added a little dollop on the top and added one of those faux cherries that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And there you have it. Once again, you can use these as ornaments or as decor. I think they're so much fun. I hope you try this. Okay, now let's make some sponge cake. Literally, sponge cake. So here I had this little tin and I thought this was perfect and it was painted white. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get some of my sponges, literally sponges from out of my cupboard because I didn't have time to get yellow sponges. You know, let's go with it, people. It's pink. It's like instead of red velvet, it's pink velvet. Let's just think of it that way. Besides, this is for Wonderland. It is all different kinds of colored cake, I think, in Wonderland, don't you? And none of them are fattening. So what I did here was, again, I'm using that leftover caulking that I had painted that light green. I, I think it's a cute combination with the light green and the pink. I don't know. You tell me. And then I'm just adding it to the middle. Originally, I was just going to sandwich the two sponges together. But then I said, aha, hold on. 
I can make this even better. So what I did is I took a smaller piece of sponge, put it in the middle, and then I put the other one on top and put a toothpick through all three of them. I think it makes it better to make like a, an, an ice cream sandwich or a cake sandwich. Does that make any sense? And then all I did was using the caulking once again, I just I, I piped it in between the two sponges and um, yeah, and I just smoothed it out once I had it all piped in. And again, I thought it would be fun to use that faux snow, faux snow, faux snow. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I have been singing Christmas carols nonstop as I decorate the Deering Estate. Why? Because I'd rather hear myself singing than any kind of weird noises that that creepy house can sometimes have. It's not creepy. It's just old. You know, just because it's old doesn't mean it's creepy. I hope I'm not, I don't become an, a creepy old lady. Qu a wacky old lady, definitely, but not creepy. But anyway, so here I just added the, the faux coconut. I added some chunky white glitter once again. And I think this really looks so cute. And then I decided to use, once again, the leftover caulking that I had already painted green. I had just enough to cover the top of this little faux pink velvet coconut pistachio cake that's what i'm gonna call it and then of course you have to put a little bit of whipped cream and a little cherry on top just to finish it off and i think it came out splendid what do you think about this one you think you'll try it yourself this would be fun to do with the kids don't you think i love it so in the wee hours of the night i remembered suddenly the queen of heart loves her tarts so i thought i i gotta make a tart i gotta at least make one tart if not three you know me if i make one i have to make three but anyway um <laughs> so yeah here i am using some foam clay uh i decided to make a tart i had these little tart pans i think i bought them for like 20 cents each or 25 cents each so i have like i don't know and it, it, it was ridiculous i think i have like five don't be ridiculous. Yeah, I have five. I wasn't that ridiculous. If there was more, I would have bought them all. I'm serious. Serious, 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 because I think they're adorable. So just like you would use a pie crust in a little pie pan, you just like put your little pie crust in the pie pan, you know, just like mush it in there. Then you got to cook it. Now we can't cook the clay. And I started with this. I don't know why I started with the, this thing. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's not working. It really wasn't working. It wasn't looking good. So I went to a brush and here I am pretending to cook the the pie. It's, it looks a little dark at first, but it's fine. You know, the crust is always a little nicer when it's a little. I love a little bit of, you know, a little, not charred, but I like the, a nicely cooked crust. So especially, oh, I love that. That is the best. Look at that. It looks so nice and glossy. So anyway, just painting the, painting the, I, it's going to be filled. So I don't know why I went through all this trouble, but it doesn't matter. At least the edges, make sure the edges are nice and painted in. So it looks like a real pie. Now I got all these little berries from the Dollar Tree. You've seen them. I've seen them. And I said, I'm going to put these to good use, making a lovely little cherry pie. I don't know if the queen of hearts likes cherry tarts, but that's what I'm making. I say pie, but it's a tart. What's the difference between pie and a tart? Those are questions I ask myself when I'm tired and my brain can't work anymore. But yeah, seriously, tell me what's the difference between a pie and a tart? Is it the same thing? Is it the size? Is it a pie, but when it's smaller than a pie, it's a tart because it's a tartlet? I don't know. Is it the way you prepare it? Tell me what, I mean, you know, as far as like edible tarts, I know what it makes, you know, I've heard a tart used in other ways but we're not going to talk about that here we're just going to talk about yummy tarts but yeah i just wanted to know what's the difference between like an apple pie and an apple tart or a cherry pie and a cherry tart is it just because they're they're english what is it what is it what's the mystery but anyway look how beautiful just you arrange your little berries look how cute then i used my hot glue and i made that into that um sugar syrup stuff whatever is all over the the cherries oh it looks so nice doesn't this look nice it looks good enough to eat it really does late at night i was like oh man i could go for one of these even though i don't look ch like cherry tarts but it still looks cute then instead because it looks so pretty i was like i'm not gonna cover this up i decided to make it an open an open air tart i don't know how you call that but i decided to just cut out a little heart with my 
foam clay that I happen to have in the color of gingerbread and it, it matched perfectly with that paint which was from folk art paint and look how well it matches I thought it was just perfect but it wasn't enough because I was like nope this is for the Queen of Hearts needs a crown the Queen of Hearts and her hearts needs a little crown so I cut out a little crown I thought it was easier to do it that way and then I just added a little crown to the top of the tart and finally I just covered it with super gloss Mod Podge to give that beautiful glossy look and then just at the very last minute I decided to add a little bit of that like it's like sparkle dust But I wanted it to look like it was you know powdered sugar like a powdered sugar glaze So that's what I added at the very end, but I think this will look lovely for the Queen of Hearts her cherry tarts for her little tea party or her tea table I love this one as well. I love them all. I love them all. I love all these faux foods. I hope you do too. And I hope this inspires you. I thought this was very fun and easy to do too. Last but not least, I decided to create a cute little gingerbread ornament for my tree in the Deering Estate. That's a Alice in Wonderland in the little Alice bedroom. I thought it would be just so cute and kind of Victorian, but a little modern, but I thought it was adorable. And this beautiful mold is IOD mold. I don't know if you've seen it before, but it was gifted to me by Jackie of Jackie Burns Create. So thank you so much, Jackie. And here I forgot to hit record when I started painting them after they dried i used the um foam clay that is the color the light brown and it's perfect for gingerbread but as you can see here i'm just painting the trim i decided to stay in the pastel colors because many of the ornaments in alice's little bedroom are in pastels and this would match perfectly as most of the most of the room is decorated with a light blue motif especially on the christmas trees a light blue a white and like a pearl white and cream or whatever and i just thought that the little burlap with this gingham uh, ribbon would be perfect and now i'm just trimming it with a little bit of holly a little red and green holly and there you go i have my little hanger and i think it just came out adorable so thank you again jackie for this wonderful gift now, if you can't sleep and want to see more, we have a full playlist of these wonderful faux and real gingerbread and Christmas goodies for you. So I hope you check out the full playlist, but most especially my co-host, the lovely Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling and Monica of Up All Night DIY. These are true blue friends of mine and they always bring me off the edge when I'm like tired and overworked and I, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. They always offer me encouragement, support and so much inspiration. So please remember to check out their channels as well as the rest of the playlist. Thank you once again for your kindness, your consideration, and most especially your time. You mean the world to me. And if you like this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It doesn't take any effort at all. And it just makes sure that you are in touch with what I am doing from week to week. As I always say, stay safe, be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. And I'll see you again very, very soon.